Hello, everybody. Welcome. We are now going through our first example here for absorption versus variable costing. This is the same number of units that are being produced and sold. Okay, so let's go over here. So YYZ had sales of 50,000 units during 2025. During 2025, they produced 50,000 units and had no beginning inventory. So I sold everything that I produced. In this case right here, we're going to get the same amount of income, but I wanna kind of go through and show you how. So let's first go through and do a variable costing income statement. So we're gonna start with our sales, less our variable costs. And this is gonna get us something called our contribution margin, less our fixed costs. And this is gonna give us our net income under variable costing, okay. So right over here, I sold 50,000 units, okay? So I had sales of 50,000 units. My per unit over here is going to be 339. So it was my selling price per unit. So under variable costing, my total sales are gonna be 50,000 times 339 or roughly right over here, 16,950. Now, if I had 16, if I sold 50,000 units, I have to take 50,000 units to my cost of goods sold. Okay, so this over here is gonna be 50,000. But now what I need to go through and do is I need to come up with my per unit for my variable cost of goods sold. Let's talk about what goes into our variable cost of goods sold. So under variable costing, my variable cost of goods sold is gonna be made up of three different things. My direct materials, my direct labor, because both direct materials and direct labor are variable in nature. My variable overhead. Well, over here, I'm trying to do this on a per unit because I sold 50,000 units. My sales price per unit was 339. So I have to figure out my variable cost per unit. So over here, my direct materials were 40 per unit. Direct labor was 50 per unit. And I'll just make this a little bit clearer for all of us. Now my total variable factory overhead was 1.5 million, but this is not in a per unit number. To figure out what my variable factory overhead per unit's gonna be, I'm gonna take my total variable factory overhead I'm gonna divide it by 50,000 units produced. So when I take 1.5 million, I divide it by 50,000, which are my units produced, I'm gonna get $30 per unit. So under variable costing, I'm gonna get a total over here on a per unit of 90, actually 120. Now, what about fixed factory overhead? Do I want to take $4 million and divide it by 50,000? The answer to that is no, not for variable costing. Because of the fixed factory overhead, we're gonna go through and expense that immediately. So my variable cost of goods sold is going to be over here at $120 per unit. Okay, so. Now, do I have other variable costs though? And the answer is I do, I have sales commissions. So my sales commissions is also a variable cost. If I sold 50,000 units, I'm gonna have sales commissions also for 50,000 units. My sales commissions right over here are going to be $30 per unit, right? It's completely coincidental that my uh, fixed factory overhead is the same. My variable overhead is the same as the sales commissions. Trust me, these are two different things. So over here, my total variable cost of goods sold is $6 million. My total sales commissions are $1.5 million. And so my total variable costs 
are going to be over here at 7.5 million. So my contribution margin is going to be my sales minus my variable costs or $9,450,000. Now for my fixed costs, I have my fixed factory overhead. My fixed factory overhead is $4 million. My fixed SG&A is going to be $800,000. Okay, so over here, my total fixed costs are going to be uh, 4.8 million. So my net income under variable costing is gonna be 4,650,000. Okay, so right over here, income statement, variable costing. Okay, now let's go ahead and do this under absorption costing or traditional costing. So the sales are always going to be the same under both methods. So I sold 50,000 units. My per unit is 339. And so my total in terms of sales is going to be 50,000 times 339 or 16,950. That's always going to be the same. Now for my cost of goods sold, I had, I sold 50,000 units. So I need to take 50,000 units to cost of goods sold. But when we're looking at absorption costing, okay, let's give ourselves a little bit more room. So my per unit under absorption costing, The direct materials are going to be the same. The direct labor is going to be the same. The variable overhead is going to be the same, but the fixed factory overhead is what is going to be different. I'm going to take my total fixed factory overhead. I'm going to divide that by 50,000 units produced. This is going to give me 4 million divided by 50,000 or $80 per unit. So my total per unit under absorption costing is going to be $200 per unit. Okay. So my total cost of goods sold is gonna be 50,000 times 200 or $10 million. Okay. Now this is going to give me my gross profit and my gross profit is gonna be 6,950. From my gross profit, I'm going to subtract selling, general, and administrative. Now, for my SGNA, what is that going to be? Sales commissions are part of SGNA. So over here, I sold 50,000 units. My sales commissions per unit are $30 per unit. So my total sales commissions. We're over here at 1.5 million. Over here for my fixed SGNA, my fixed SGNA was 800,000. Doesn't change. Okay. So my total SGNA is going to be 2.3 million. My net income under absorption costing is going to be 6.95 million minus 2.3 million or 4,650,000. Now, Chai you might be saying, Tchaikovsky, you're an idiot, right? What are you doing here? I mean, they're the same number. This is going to be the only time that the numbers will be the same for net income. The reason is if I produce and sell all of my units, then what's going to happen is there's no ending inventory. So all my costs are getting flushed through. In the situations where we have a beginning or an ending inventory, however, our numbers are going to be different. And that's what we're going to be covering in the subsequent videos. But what I do want you to look at this video for is to make sure you understand how the statements are prepared. So when we go through and do other videos, you're going to want to have a good understanding in terms of how do we actually go through and prepare these statements. So in any event, I want to thank you for being here with me today. 
Uh, thank you for liking and subscribing to the videos. If there's anything else you'd like to see in the future, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Have a great day.